Can everyone see my screen? Oh, yes. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to start with a um, uh, with the presentation because that is what I tend to do. I, I make a kind of InDesign file as a start and then I start feeding in uh, feeding things into it um, until I have basically a completed presentation and I work on the uh, the different uh, individual parts uh, in the meantime. So if you open uh, InDesign, you can go into File New and you want to click on Document. Um, there are different things that you can click on. So there is print, there is web, uh, there's mobile. Uh, for this one, I'm going to go with a um, A3 paper um, landscape, but because it's a similar um, you know, size to the one that you usually do um, in architecture school, it's within the A range. Um, so that that is that is what it looks like once you open that file. You can press Control minus or Control plus to zoom in and out uh, of this document here, um, and you will see that there are uh, very specific bars here. So there is this bar on uh, the left hand side where you have all the tools that you need to edit uh, the document, and you have the bars on your right hand side. Um, under the tab of pages, you have this area that is the master, which I will explain what it is in a bit. And you have this area that is essentially your pages. Um, so the master is basically what goes into the background of all the pages that you have. And these are the pages of your presentation. It's like uh, the master is kind of like a template uh, that you use. So wh what I tend to do is I make the the master pages before I start so that I have um, some kind of guideline about what, you know, uh, how I'm going to break up the space that I have um, and where I can place different things. So I'm going to add a few pages here so you can go into this tab and click on this button here and that is going to create a new page. Uh, oops, that is going to create uh, a new page on here. Um, you can right click in this area as well and you can go to panel options um, and you can select on here how big you want these to be. I have a relatively large screen so I tend to have everything extra large and jumbo because I want to be able to see what it is that I'm doing. But if you want to make that slightly smaller, you see here, um, you can see how many pages you have and what is on each page in a little bit of an easier way. Um, this is also a facing document, so if you click on here and press Control minus, you will see that this would be your cover page. That is what is behind your cover page, first page and stuff like that. But you can also change this to be into a kind of a, a single page document. So if you go to File, um, Document, uh, Setup, um, you can unclick the facing pages and uh, click OK and that is going to make it into essentially a one page document, which is I'm assuming what you would want for a, a digital presentation ideally. So if I double click on this now, I can actually um, delete one of the pages uh, of the master because I don't actually need it anymore. It's not a, a two page thing. So I'm now in the master. As you can see, there's no more pages. It's just that one. This is an A master and as you can see on here, it is applied to all of the three pages that I have. And what I'm going to start with doing here is I'm going to pull a couple of rulers on this. So you will see there is a, a ruler on the top and side of the page. So if you click on it and drag, uh, it basically makes kind of a line on here. And that is a, a guideline for where you want to place, um, you know, different elements. It creates a grid within your page. So I'm going to put one in 25 points, which is about here. Um, same for this one, same for that one, and that is kind of an offset to know uh, where I want to place everything on my screen. And if you if you double click on your pages, you will see that this is now applied to all of the pages you have. So you have everything in that way aligned in the same place. So if you want to place an image here, you know it's going to be within the same uh, area as the image above. 
Um, so the way to hide it is to press W in your uh, in your keyboard, and then you can of course uh, unhide it again um, and hide all of the grids um, if you press W. I tend to work without looking at the grids because um, at the end of the day, everything I, I place is roughly in the same place, and then I can adjust it. But a lot of people prefer to work with this uh, visible. So if if we double click back into the master, I'm going to add a couple more um, of the grids here. And um, that is because I'm trying to divide my um, my paper into roughly three uh, equal size areas. And I've decided that I want to place my text here, um, as I was showing before, and an image or a diagram or whatever it is that I, I, I'm doing right on this side. So this is a very rough um, outline for, for what I want to do uh, with my page. As you can see, this is also reflected in the rest of the document as a master applied. So this would be one of the, the typical pages that I do. Now, if I want to do uh, a full screen page that I want the guidelines for, I can right click on here and I can duplicate and this creates a master B. And for this one, what I want to do is, for example, I want to add um, another uh, guide on here that is in the middle. Maybe what I want to do for this one is I want to have four smaller images and I want to see where to place those. But because this has not been applied to anything, if I click on my document, of course, none of them has this kind of master. So if I want to apply that kind of grid onto that, I can take this and drag it onto the page that I want. So it's basically click and drag. And then now my first page has that kind of master. Um, so that's that's kind of a simple way of setting up um, your, uh, your, your workspace to start with. Um, I'm going to go back into master A on here. And uh, what I want to do is start um, adding some uh, rough text uh, um, you know, titles, subtitles. So if you click on the this button here, this is the type tool. So I can click and drag. Um, and what that does is it creates um, a text box essentially that you can click on and write different things. So for example, here I want this to be a title. Um, and I cannot spell for some reason today. <laughs> and if I click on this selection tool on here, uh, and press Control, Shift, and Alt at the same time. I can click and drag down, and that is going to duplicate this. And I want this, for example, to be my subtitle on there. And I can duplicate Control, Shift, and Alt another time, and this is my main text. Um, on here is if there is to your to your file. And then if you click on here, you can click and delete. As you can see here, of course, because this is applied there, it has applied this kind of setting to the rest of your document. Um, and now I can start working with the typography. So I want this one. Uh, if you double click on there and press Control A, it selects the whole text on there. Up here, you can see what font it is using. So I want this, for example, to be uh, Helvetica. You may not have Helvetica, you may have some other font that you want to use. I'm going to go for um, a Helvetica standard bold for my title, and I want it to be um, 24 points, for example. And that's that's kind of the size, maybe 30. And then I want my subtitle to be, again, a different font, and I want it to be um, an ultralight and 24. On my main text, again, I can select what it is that I want to use. Usually they say 11 to 12 if it's a print document, but of course you can make it as big as you need uh, for it to be visible on screen as we were talking about before. So here is my text. Um, what I can do is I can add on here. Um, this is a rectangle frame tool. Um, so if I click and drag it across here, that gives me a space where I can um, 
drag and drop an image if I really want to. Um, it kind of just outlines the area for it. Uh, essentially, it's just for me to be able to see what space I have to to work with, and if I need to, you know, update something or change something, uh, just to make sure that it's the same size. So that has now been updated to the main document for all of the pages. If I add a new page on here, it's going to have the same kind of master as before. So that that's the layout I'm kind of working with for here. Um, and from then on, what I can do is I can go into my different uh, color schemes that I have. Say, for example, I have selected this color scheme here, so I can click and drag the image into this. Um, I don't want it to be anywhere specifically, so I'm just going to click and drag and then click again and drag um, to place it on there. And I'm going to create a very simple kind of um, palette of colors. So if, if I click on the rectangle tool, I can click on here and drag and it makes a rectangle. And then I can select it and click on the eyedropper tool to pick out what it is that I want to uh, pick out as a color from the image. For example, I want this blue to be one of the main colors that I have. Um, it has been selected, but you see this doesn't really show anything at the moment. Um, but that is because on here on the side where you can see the different colors um, that you have in your palette, it is because um, it has taken this color and has put it as an outline to the shape I just made. So if I click on here in the selection tool, you can see it's a little bit clearer that this one is, is that color, which is completely fine. Um, the way to reverse that is to click on this tiny arrow tool uh, here and it's just going to flip uh, between the colors that you have, which is, is completely fine. Um, and you can also see up here in the information tab uh, that you have uh, a fill color, um, which is on there. And then you have a stroke color that at the moment has no color at all, which is why it has that red line on there. If you click on the arrow on the side, you have uh, different colors that you can choose from. Um, it's um, non, you have registration, you have paper, black, and then you have all of the default colors. But if you want to add this to the palette, you can actually click on the new swatch um, point on here, and it's going to add it at the bottom as one of the colors that you can automatically choose to apply to anything that you have in your presentation. So if, if you go ahead and press Control Alt Shift and drag that box across however many times you need for all of the colors, um, you can actually click and select all of the color scheme that you want to actually be using uh, for this document, which is very helpful to have uh, in hand. Um, you know, for, for future reference, for making diagrams. So I'm going to now delete this image because I no longer need it. And I can actually click here and add all of those colors as swatches. This is a, a pretty easy way to do it from, from something that you have found um, basically on, on Pinterest or somewhere else that you want. Um, and you have it at hand there. So if you select everything and press Control G, that makes it all into a group, so it's easier to drag around. What I tend to do is I take this uh, with Control X, um, crop it out and add it into a master um, by clicking on it. Uh, and I add it up here so that if I, um, if I press W, I can actually see it and reference it, but if I'm on presentation mode, it's actually not visible um, to anybody else at this moment in time. Um, so, if I click back here, actually, if I say in there, so I want, say, to make the title of my document, to select it, go to the eyedropper tool and make it into a nice blue. And that changes that, um, that title. And then I want my subtitle to be um, this kind of uh, base, base color. And then I want my text to be black. So. That's that's a very easy way to do it because you have that reference there. You can just select things, 
double click and select and then with the eyedropper tool you can basically um, change the color that you want and you have that kind of thing for your whole document kind of applied on there. Um, are there any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Is this helpful? Hello. Hello. Uh, hi, uh, so I wanted to ask, because uh, it's more common in architecture at least um, to use single pages for the final portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask if you wanted to try out uh, two pages um, when yep. When the teachers uh, open the file, do you know whether it would immediately open as two pages or would I have to set uh, set it on their computer first? So uh, usually what happens is documents just open up in a single line. So mm -hmm. as you see it now, um, one way to show it as two pages, if you go to the document setup, say for example I want facing pages um, is to go to file export um, and export the file as spreads uh, which is actually say I want this to be saved here um, I, I will talk about that in a little bit, but it, there is this option here to export it as spreads. And what that does is it exports a page and then it exports two pages together. But that is also not very good because it's very hard to read if it's a very, very, very long page on the screen, especially if somebody, as Rob was saying before, is reading from a phone, for example. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. It just makes it very difficult to work with. So I would ideally say that uh, you export as a single pager. Now you see okay. it comes okay. out like this, um, and then they're just gonna they're just gonna read it um, however they prefer, essentially. Um, or you can add a note on your your document and say ideally this should be read as a you know as a document that opens up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to just keep that here. Um, actually, this may be a good thing to talk about. I'm assuming you know how to save, but I shouldn't assume things. <laughs> so if you go to File, uh, Save As, um, you can actually save this document, whatever it is that you want. I've just saved it as it is. Ideally, you want to have something like this that is the title of the document what it is, what version it is, and so that you have a good control and management of your work so that you don't lose it. I am very guilty of that in undergraduate specifically. I was looking for um, the, the part three examination for some work that I had done and essentially it was impossible to find because everything was like ABC35 final, second final version and it just you don't really know what it is that you're looking at. So save things with proper names. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Um, and you can just save it there uh, so that you can find it and access it um, afterwards. So um, yeah, so that's that's a way to to do your your base pages and uh, you can w in w out just to see what is happening. Um, what I tend to really like having is um, kind of break pages and um, so th that's the pages that go between sections and prepare as well a kind of um, cover page that I can I can use. I don't need to have uh, for the cover page and the content page I don't really need to have a master because these are just individual pages they are not going to really be repeated across the document. So I just added another page here and uh, I'm going to apply uh, none so I want no formatting, no grids, uh, no anything on these two because it's going to be the contents and the um, uh, and the cover page. So that's that's completely fine uh, if you want to have a layout on there. Um, so I'm just going to go here and copy these two. Just add the title. Um, so what you have is what this is about name of the project maybe things like 
of course, your name, um, what semester it is, what submission it is, any information that is required for your cover on here. Um, and you can keep it um, with the same kind of rules, rule of third, rule of thirds. What I tend to do is I put it on kind of the side, the other side, so that it's it's a bit different from, from the rest of the document, but that's your preference, how you want to lay out these pages. And same goes for the contents. So if you um, control shift alt and then click and drag, it kind of um, copies it across different pages. Or you can also control C and then press control shift alt V, I think, and that places it in the same place as the image you copied the the text or the uh, the image from essentially. Um, so I'm just gonna do that. Area. This is content. Um, and what I wanna do here is I want to duplicate uh, another master and. What I want to do is I want to um, make a kind of um, divider page that is going to just be a color uh, and have a bit of text to show what um, section we're talking about, basically. So the way to do that is very easy. You can go into the rectangle tool, click and drag to make a rectangle on your page, then select that rectangle. Um, click on the eyedropper tool, click on this um, this reference you have at the top and you have a page that is this color on here. And I can now say I have two pages here and I want to apply this master there. Um, I can apply that onto, onto here and add, for example, the same text that I have on my cover, just to say this is section one. And change it into a plain white. So if I press W, just a section divider on here. So after here, I can go back into my presentation. So you see, I'm double clicking between the masters and the presentation because I'm still fixing that. After a while, I'm not going to need to edit this at all. So I can now add another page. Of course, it does the same thing that was in the page above. And I can change the master to the main master that I have by clicking and dragging onto it and applying it to this page. So you, you see now you have a very easily consistent presentation that you can actually populate with the things that you want to populate it with. And it, it's just typography and color. And it doesn't, you know, it's very clear to be able to, to read through this. So what you're going to notice is that because this is the text that comes from the master, you can't actually click it at the moment, you can't really edit it. Um, if you want to edit it, you can press Control Shift click and that activates this kind of area within um, the specific page without actually changing the uh, the master, which, is, which applies to the rest of the pages. So um, if I want to change the title here, for example, to concept analysis, um, very easy to do. And similarly, if you click on the selection tool, you can control shift click on the subtitle and change that into, for example, overview and to say what it is that you want to talk about. Same for the text, uh, same for the images. Um, this one is not visible. I just clicked on it, but it's, it's where you would place an image. So now everything is editable and movable on here and you can, of course, you can work with it for that specific page without affecting the layout that you have for the rest of your pages. So if I wanted to add an image or a diagram into here, what I can do is click on an image that I want to add. Uh, for the sake of, uh, of showing this, of course, it's not going to match the colors. I'm just going to click and drag this into here. Um, and what you're going to notice is that this doesn't really fit at the moment. And there is a blue outline when you click on it once. And if you click on it twice, there's a brown outline. So what that means is that with a brown outline, you're um, controlling the size of the image you have placed inside the, 
the box, whereas with the blue outline, you're uh, controlling the size of the, the container box that you have placed on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate <laughs> what that means. Um, so if I double click on this, you see there is a brown outline. I'm going to click and drag it up to here. And you see it stops where the blue box has actually stopped, which is what we want in this case. We want it to be the same size. So if I if I click on the edge here and press shift and um, scale it, so you can actually make it, uh, you can position it to be within the bounds of the box that you want to have on here. And then I'm, pr I'm pressing shift and dragging it across to, to basically place it where I want. Whereas if I had clicked on it once, um, and I was editing the blue line, what that would do is it would change, you know, the bounding box of your image. Does that make sense? At all? Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, okay, that's that's good. So I have, I have placed an image now on here. So this is my text, this is my title. Um, I have what it is that I want in there. It's within the bounds of um, of the areas that I have set for myself, there's enough spacing uh, between things, um, so that's that's completely fine. Uh, the other thing I could do is instead of having this kind of uh, section, I could also make um, another page that has, for example, um, a full. Can apply a non on here. I could take this and just freehand place it because, for example, this is a. Uh, and a very important thing that I want to talk about, I can just place it across the image, uh, across the page here, and that could be another way of dividing your document and making it more interesting. So the, the issue is that uh, if you have too many pages that look the same, although that helps with consistency and being able to read it, it can also become really, really boring. So every few pages, uh, four or five, uh, I remember, and this is something that I kind of learned from CPU in year five and six, it's basically to break them up, break up the documents every four to five pages with something that is a different layout, but still fits within that kind of um, uh, style that you have as a whole. So, okay, um, this is, one way of making a uh, bare bones of presentation to ensure that the things that you do are actually consistent and they read as one document. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into Photoshop and Illustrator and I'm going to show you how to edit your diagrams and things that you export from AutoCAD or Revit to, um, to make sure that it also fits the style that you have here. So one thing to remember is that you have selected a specific, um, what is it called, a specific font uh, and a specific color scheme. So you want to take that into your diagrams so that everything reads as one, essentially. So I have opened Illustrator here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into AutoCAD. I have uh, a document here that I can basically export. Uh, I, I apologize, I don't have a SketchUp in this computer. I have Revit and I can I can actually export from there, but I'm assuming you, you know how to export from here. For now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly print this. Um, I wanna do this kind of thing with uh, Bluebeam PDF here. And I wanna go to Window. In this case, I can just select what it is that I want to export. Um, that's what it looks like, and I want to print it into a PDF document so that I can edit it in Illustrator to match the things that I want uh, to match. So I'm going to go into my drive, if I find it here. Save it here. So here's my file. I'm going to click and drag into Illustrator. This is a PDF file, so you can actually um, you can actually see um, 
things and edit things uh, in a very easy way. So that's what it looks like when it comes in. There are worse ways for it to appear, and I think I actually have one in here, on there. Yeah. So that is before I had slightly edited the the file to be a bit more uh, black and white. Um, it is what I was showing you before of a, a completely uncontrolled document that comes basically straight from CAD with no editing. Uh, no line weights, no nothing at all. Um, and in some ways that can be a good thing because you can actually select things a lot easier when you're an illustrator, but also it's it can be an issue as well. So maybe in that case, I'm just going to start from here. So you can see you have, depending on the different things that you have allowed for in your in your CAD files, you have a series of different lines that have different colors, different with you know um it can be a bit of a mess and in this case what i want to do is i want to for example select all of the lines that are red that are a building and i want to make them into a different color um and for example um a different line weight uh, within illustrator so to do that i would go to the direct selection tool and as you can see this is basically the same as it is uh, with InDesign, which is why these two softwares work really well together and they communicate with each other. Uh, so you can select on here um, a line that you want to select and you can go to select same uh, fill and stroke. So that will automatically se select everything that is a line that is red. And you can see up here and similarly to here that this is a line that has no fill and it has essentially just a red, you know, outline. And um, you can also see the stroke of it here. So that is how thick it is at the moment is 0.72. If I made it into eight, for example, uh, it's going to take a while. But you see it becomes really, really massive. So I'm going to change it into 0.5 in this case. And I haven't actually it would have been a good idea for me to bring here um, the colors that I have chosen before. So I'm going to click here like this. Control C, Control V. So that brings in the colors that I had picked before, um, which is another reason why I'm saying this is a really good thing that uh, these pieces of talk communicate really well with each other. Um, so I'll put this to the side as I'm working on it. Sorry, my computer is being really slow. So just to quickly jump in, um, obviously when you are working on multiple drawings, which you want to edit with the colors you have, the better thing to do would be to save them as like a color preset or color group in your Illustrator. So you don't need to sort of like search the colors and be like, oh, which document did I save them? And, you know, like bring them every time you can just save them as um, like your own color scheme and in design and just or illustrator and just load it every time you start a new drawing. Yeah, which is what I tend to not do, which is not a good practice in this case. <laughs> I, I also didn't do it for a long time. And then I think once you started like doing stuff in the in the lab is like collaboratively and then it's just easier to send over that, you know, color profile document. I don't know whether whatever it's the name of it, you know, to, to whoever you're working with so everybody can use the same one for the illustrator and it, it actually saves so much time. That is definitely good practice. <laughs> like I'm not judging you, I'm just saying. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely, definitely. Many things you're doing, it, it can save time to just save it once and then load it every time you need it. Yeah. No, I agree, I agree. Um, yeah, but but once once you you essentially have your your colors in there, um, you can um, go ahead and as as we were saying before, you can add it again to the to the colors color palette, or you can import the color palette, um, as Sigita was saying before, um, into different documents. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to change um, the the buildings, um, like everything that is red, for example, um, in this case, to be. So if I click on here, so select same. Um, 
stroke color. And I'm going to change everything that is currently red into a yellow, for example. And that is, uh, if I click out, that is a very, very simple way, as you can see, to create um, a match between your general presentation that you have and uh, the diagrams that you're you're working on, which is basically to bring in the colors from one to the other. Um, so a different thing to do in this case, I'm going to select everything black and make it into a little bit of a less, um, you know, less strong uh, line. So select the same stroke color again and make all of these into 0.25. And it takes a little bit of time, but you see here you have very, very quickly you have something that looks a little bit more polished than it did before. Of course, when you export, don't do as I did. You can change these, you can you can hide these, you can um, decide what it is that you're going to show. It's for the, in this case, it is more to demonstrate how you could go about very quickly changing something very specific within here. Um, so, OK, let's do one last thing of changing and editing on here, and I can drop it into the presentation just to show you how to drop this into there. And then I can go through a few other things that you can do when you want to uh, make some diagrams. So I'm going to select all of these again, same um, stroke color and go into here and make it this kind of bluey green. Um, and then I can save this as it is and uh, drop it into the presentation that I have. That I have open. I apologize, this is not really working at the moment. OK, this may be working a bit better. OK, so again, it's you can click and drag it into the presentation. What you can also do is go to the specific um, area that you want to place this in and go to file. Um, place, if I find the place here, or press Control D um, and go into the folder where you have saved uh, your drawing here and open. Of course, if it's an uh, Illustrator file uh, that has that many lines, it's very likely that it's going to be pretty heavy, so it may take some time. So do wait for it. So you see here, it shows me that I have the drawing, but it hasn't placed it anywhere because I haven't told it to place it anywhere. So one thing you can do is just click, but then if you click, it's going to do whatever it wants. So you can also click and drag, and you can that is going to place it um, as big as it is that you need. Uh, if you want your drawings to be a specific size, of course, and you have exported in a specific size, clicking, just clicking without clicking and dragging is the best thing you can do because it's going to place it uh, in the exact same size as you exported. So that's that's a pretty good thing to do. Um, this one is the wrong direction as well. So what I want to do is I want to click on it and I want to click and rotate. So that's a way to, to basically um, do a very easy rotation. So you can also see up here. You can also see up there the, the angle is changing as I'm changing it, but it's not really necessarily controlled at the moment because I haven't really um, constrained it in any way. So if you click shift while you rotate, it's going to uh, clip onto the diagonal. So 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, etc. And the other thing you can do is you can change this angle here if you want it to be in a very, very specific angle. So I wanted 45 degrees. Um, I can just press 45 and it's going to do that um, in this case here. So 
um, I have placed this here at the moment, but as you can see, because it's not into this box, um, it's not really the right size. So what I can do is I can um, drag it and align it to the uh, to the markers uh, that I have placed on here, and I can uh, click Control Shift and drag, which is basically uh, drag from the edge here, which is basically going to change the size of the, the image you have to fit within um, uh, the space that you, you you want it to fit, but without um, messing with its proportion. So, for example, if I had clicked on here and just dragged it, then it just um, changes the blue box that I was talking about before. Um, if I had clicked um, just um, Alt, for example, that would be um, making a proportional sizing of the space um, that uh, the image is in. So what you want to do is you want to click Control Shift and then drag the edge if you want to scale it. And then just click and drag if you want to um, select what it is that you want to show. And like before, if you double click on this and um, you have a hand showing up, you can just click um, and press Shift and, and drag across just to show how much of the um, of the image you want to show, essentially. And you have that um, that file in here now as well. Um, if you have something like this, uh, you may want to conserve a little bit of uh, computer power because it can be really difficult to run. Uh, a way to do that is to right click on the image and go down to display performance. At the moment, it doesn't show it, but it's on typical display. But if I put it on fast display, it's going to still keep the image, but it's going to uh, reduce its preview uh, as you're working on the file that you're working on. And if your computer is struggling with it, um, that is a good thing to do. But if you want to be looking at your presentation and editing it visually as you're working, ideally you want um, a typical display, which is what we had before. I tend to not go for uh, a high quality one because that does show every detail of the drawing that I have placed, but also that's what it will look like, for example, if it was printed. But it's also really, really difficult for the computer. It takes a lot of resources to uh, to go ahead. So I, I tend to go with typical, um, typical display. And then if I want to see kind of what it looks like presented, um, I can press uh, Shift W. And that creates uh, a presentation view, which is what I was showing you before when I was presenting through um, basically InDesign. Um, if you wait a little bit, it's going to show you <laughs> in a bit uh, the same thing that I was showing as a, as a high quality display. It's just because there's too many lines in here. So, and you can, I'm just going to not, not wait for it in this case. I'm just going to press escape and then you can come out of that uh, very easily. So it's W to look at what it looks like in the presentation mode. Um, and then escape to go back to what uh, to your editing views. Uh, and W if you want to show the rules, uh, the rulers on, on the sides. So I'm going to jump back into the, um, the Illustrator uh, documents on here. Um, and I'm going to add another page here. For example, if you wanted to add a diagram in this case. I'm going to close both of these on here um, so that I can I can save a little bit of computer energy. Um, so I can go into File New. Uh, I'm going to select an A4 page in this case. And for example, say I want to, to make a diagram that very, very quickly showcases key aspects of the project. So the key aspects of the project um, are, for example, efficiency, um, transport links, and um, sustainability. I'm just making this up as I go. So it's the same thing as before. You can click on the type tool to make a text. Uh, a text box and then you can edit that uh, as it is. If you select everything, you can also see up here 
the specifics of um, that text box. So you have um, a center alignment, for example, that I tend I tend to use for presentations very much. Um, and you can you can kind of move things around in your page. Um, for this, what I wanted to show um, is some very easy uh, icons that you can use. So you have on the side here um, a rectangle tool, an ellipse tool, polygons, uh, and all sorts of things um, with regards to basic shapes. So if you click and drag. Um, it, it kind of creates the shape that you have selected. Um, you can press shift to make it into like a full circle. If you don't press shift, it kind of makes it into a, uh, an oval of some sort. So in this case, I'm going to, to do this um, here and then again, click the selection to copy it across. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I want to show in this case. Um, so for each of these things, I want these to have an icon of some sort. Um, a good website for this is the Noun Project website. Um, so I can look into um, different uh, icons that other people have made and I can download them to use uh, for presentations. So for example, for efficiency, I want this one. Um, and if you if you click uh, get icon, you, you need an account to do that, but uh, you can download as download it as part of a creative license. So this is um, for free, but you have to reference who has done it basically at the end of your your document in your uh, references page. But it's it's a huge benefit because you can actually have a massive range of things that you can use. So I'm going to save it as SVG in this case uh, on here and it's going to come up in my downloads, hopefully. Once it does, does it? No, it doesn't read SVG, this computer. I apologize. I'm going to download it as a PNG. So that's fine. So I can take it from here and add it into my folder. But what you're going to notice is that um, if I take it and drag it into my presentation, it's actually, I can't really do anything to change the color of it. I can't really do very much to change things that I want to change. So the way to, to, to trace it essentially is if you click on it, you're going to see at the top on here, um, you have an image trace option. So if you click on that, um, what is that going to do is um, make it into an editable vector file essentially that you can change the color of and you can change different aspects of it. You could do that in Photoshop, but it's the quality of your output, especially for diagrams, is much better as a vector version um, because it doesn't uh, pixelate. Of course, when you print it, when you, you zoom into it, it's, it's, a, it's good practice to use uh, Illustrator. So I've done that. If I click expand on here and double click into this, um, this uh, icon, you can see that each of the elements that it has is kind of an editable, different, separate thing that it has. So I'm, I'm going to control Z all of this. Um, and what I want from this icon is the black area. So I'm going to click on it, control X. Um, but you see, it doesn't select everything that is black if I do that. So if I click on this and go to select same fill color, you will now notice that it has selected everything that is black within this area. So if I control X this and double click outside because this is kind of a group in itself as it comes in, I can now delete this and I can control V um, the icon that I want and I now have kind of a full a full icon happening here. Of course, this is this comes out in separate bits now. So what you can do is you can click and drag and select what it is that you want to select and you can press control G to group it or. Well, right click group or right click ungroup if you want to ungroup something. Um, so on here, right click group um, so that it you can basically click and drag it around and use it as uh, its own entity. So I'm going to delete this for now. 
Um, similarly to uh, InDesign, if I click um, here on the side and press Shift, uh, I can scale it up and down. Uh, whereas if I hadn't pressed Shift, it would just squish it, which is not what we want in this case. So, sure that it's going to keep its shape. Um, so I'm going to basically place this on to here. Of course, you can't really see anything. Um, even if I change, as before, the color of this to be the color of this one to be a light gray. Um, it's going to be, oh, I thought that was in the wrong place. Well, um, I thought this was at the front, but actually that's not the case. And what I wanted to show you is that um, when you place something, there is a hierarchy um, of where things are in relation to each other. So this circle is at the moment behind this image. Um, but what I can do is I can click on it, right click and go to arrange and bring to front. And that kind of hides what is kind of behind it. But actually, it's just that things are overlaid with each other in this case. So if this happens and you bring something in, just right click, arrange, um, send to back. And it's going to show you the thing that you have brought in at a later point in this case. So that's that's kind of uh, a way to, to make a diagram. Again, as before, <laughs> this is not good practice. I should have brought in my... Um, a color scheme, um, but it's good to have that here so that I can actually say, you know, this one is there, that one is uh, a different thing, this one is also a different thing, um, and you have, um, you know, the same style and the same color as other elements of what you're doing uh, within your presentation um, through the color. Um, it's the same for the text, of course, make sure that you have changed that to be the same um, typography as what you have used in your presentation. In this case, I'm going to make it like that. And as before, this is an Illustrator file, it's not a PDF file, but I can save this um, uh, into here. Um, again, uh, as an Illustrator file, because the two software can speak to each other, I can just um, drag the file into um, into my presentation on there, and it it will read the the file with no issues. So I have I have clicked and dragged it in. So. That's kind of a diagram, for example, that you may want to put in there. Um, yeah, so if you if you were um, in this case uh, in a position where you wanted to essentially edit um, to, to make your own icons or uh, edit a shape, um, you have uh, different tools that you can do things with. So, for example, I want to to merge these two shapes to make a kind of different shape on here. I would copy them across, select both of them, and you have this tool here that is called the Shape Builder. So if you click on it, um, you can see on here it kind of highlights a little bit of the, the different things that are the, the different compartments of the shapes that you, you have. So if you click here and drag across, it basically tells it that you want to merge these components of the shapes. So if I unclick now, this is now a single shape on its own, and I can I can you know it depending on what it is that I want. I can also um, copy another shape on here, um, select all of the shapes again, click on this, click once, and click out. And then if I click and delete the shape, this creates a kind of a hole in there, which well, is very helpful. Um, for different diagrams, if you want to, for example, highlight an area in a plan, that that is a very good thing to be able to do. Um, so 
let's see if there is something else. These are the things that I tend to use essentially the most um, for existing drawings. Uh, if I really wanted to make um, a, a new, completely new shape, I would go with the pen tool, which is I think the same in Photoshop as well. So you can go ahead and trace, for example, an outline of something. So you can just click and drag and it creates uh, more kind of organic shapes. And then if I click on this, it kind of ends with like a whole, a whole new shape that you can work with. Which is very useful when it comes to editing uh, plants, for example, um, and doing things like uh, creating diagrams and outlines uh, similar to the ones that I was showing before, like these ones. Um, it would be, for example, very easy, easy to work with that kind of um, arrangement. Um, so if you if you're coming, for example, from AutoCAD, um, from from Revit, and I have opened uh, the default project here, uh, you can follow a very similar uh, similar process to that. So you have things like this, for example. I'm just going to export this as a PDF as well. Um, so I want this to be. I think it would be an A1. I don't really know. Ah, this is not really. Yeah, so I'm just going to. I'm just going to print this document as it is. And then take it into uh, Illustrator and edit it and then try to edit it a little bit more in. Um, in Photoshop just to show you a few different techniques of what you can actually do. So I'm going to print this this one here. So this is the file. If I um, bring it into Illustrator, you can see on here. Oh, it doesn't read the text. Um, anyway, yes. So you can see on here it comes in as different lines and different shapes that you can click on and edit. Um, depending on your requirements. So similarly to before, what you can do is you can bring in your um, your color scheme um, and you can click into different sections and click on the eyedropper tool, for example, change the, the different areas that you have in your building um, into the colors that you have in the rest of your presentation and that is pretty helpful. You can also select um, specific lines. So if I select, for example, this line here, um, and you have um, a specific stroke or a stroke weight that you have used, you could actually change um, the line weight of these to be thicker or thinner. Um, what I, what I really tend to do is, of course, and that is good practice for for um, any kind of drawing that you do, I tend to want anything that is cut to be a bit of a thicker line. Things like furniture, um, steps, stuff like that, um, a bit thinner if possible, just to show that kind of visual hierarchy of, you know, this is a building envelope, this is what is inside, um, things like that. Um, but but that's, that's going to be up to you. Um, to do and to decide eventually. But the, the idea is that you can bring things that you have exported as a PDF um, into Illustrator and you can actually really change um, the specifics of it to fit your presentation style and um, get it to have the colors that you want and and kind of that, um, that overall image. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is you can use lines um, to indicate, um, and the line tool is here, uh, to indicate entrance and exit points in, in a drawing. So if I click and drag pressing shift, 
there is a line on here. Again, if I select it, I can see there is no fill color and there is no um, line color onto it, but I can actually add uh, a line weight on here uh, and make it as thin or thick as I want. In this case, I want to, to have a five point line uh, to show the entrance of a building, for example. So if I click on the, the stroke tool on here, I can change the, the head of it um, to have an arrow, for example. So you can see here, it's very, very easy um, to make uh, to make these kinds of diagrams that show um, sun direction, uh, as an example, or or entrance to your building or adjacency uh, to different different spaces. Um, you can also, if there is nothing, if there is no hatch on there, you could also um, go in with your pen tool and you can say, oh, I want to select, for example, all of this area here. Um, and give it um, a different outline or um, make it have um, a different fill, for example, to show, to, to illustrate a point. You can change the opacity of these as well, depending on, uh, on what it is that you that you want to, to discover and uh, what it is that you want to discuss. Um, but yeah, uh, that would be the base of uh, what it is that um, you can do with this kind of thing. You, you can edit it, you can, you can add shapes over things and um, basically make the drawings as it is that you want them. Um, are there any questions so far? I guess it's a no. Has, any, has everybody fallen asleep? Well, I'm still listening if that's any. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, would it be worth having a five minute break then uh, for a little bit before I go into into Photoshop uh, in a bit of detail? Because this is more around adding like flat colors for diagrams and very basically editing um, PDFs. But then if you want to add you know, textures, for example, or make the kind of drawing that I was showing before that is more along the lines of this. Um, Photoshop is a better way to to look into these kinds of things. Yeah, so let's take five minutes and. Yep. Yep, and quarter past. Yep, that, that would be fine. Cool. Okay, see you in a bit. See you in a bit.
Okay, I'm back. I assume everyone else is here as well. Hello. Hello. Nice. It's good to have some feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, talking to yourself gets you, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, in the meantime, I have just exported uh, a site plan that I'm going to bring into Photoshop. Um, okay. So that we can look into uh, editing some textures. Um, yeah. Um, one, one thing I wanted to say is that I'm kind of running through um, everything in a little bit of a fast pace because this is kind of the, um, the process I would follow myself when I, I work on a project. Um, and that is, that, is, that is something I've kind of uh, learned over time. Um, and one of the things that I really I think had an issue with, especially in undergraduate, I would focus on one thing. I would focus on a plan, on a section, on an elevation, and then I would have one really good drawing and then everything else would be an utter mess. Whereas this kind of thing of working between different software and working between, uh, working with a base of a presentation and having something to work towards uh, has really uh, helped keep track of the quality and the amount of everything that I need to produce. So at any given point in time, what you will see me doing is having the presentation open and working in Illustrator, working in Revit, working in, in Photoshop. And then as soon as I finish something, I just drag it in. And that is to make sure that I have, I have a, a feel over how um, my progress is going and how everything is going. And that's that's a big part of, of, of time managing a project as well. It's not only about, you know, uh, a way of presenting it and checking that everything is, is consistent with each other. It's also about making sure that I have produced everything that I need to produce. And um, yeah, which is why you see me kind of jumping across different things, essentially. Um, so if there is anything specific that you wanted to talk about, uh, or you wanted me to talk about, please feel free to, to tell me so that I can I can actually cover it. It's just at the moment I'm going through everything that is immediately useful to work with, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, I, I just exported the same way that I did before. I just exported uh, a drawing here from from Revit. It's just a line drawing with uh, a few shadows um, and I've exported it into a PDF and basically dragged it into um, into Photoshop um, and it just opens it like that. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to just select this part to work on. I'm going to ignore everything else. So to do that, I'm going to click on this tool here. It's a polygonal lasso tool. And click around the drawing to um, basically cut it out of the, the rest of the image so that uh, um, I can only focus on that in this case. So I, I can control X and that cuts it from this layer on here. And then control V and that places it into a new layer. This is the, the layer layer section of uh, Photoshop. It is the same across uh, InDesign and Illustrator. And you can use layers if you have a lot of different um, information going into, into your file. In Illustrator, you can find this onto this tab on here. Um, and you can press on here to, to add a different layer. Um, same for um, InDesign. So they all look very, very similar in this case. It's just with Photoshop, it's it's quite a, a primary um, area that you're going to be working on because especially with applying textures, it's, it's really, really important to have things uh, very well organized. 
um, with each other. So as I showed you, as I showed just uh, just now, uh, you can click on here um, and you can add another layer. The layers that are uh, further up are over layers that are further below. So for example, if I take this and drag it down, what that does is um, it takes it under um, the layer that is here. So for example, if I added a layer here and I made um, I made it uh, with this tool here that is the paint bucket tool, I made it all um, black. Um, this would be below this layer that has a hole because I got something out of it, but over the layer that I just pasted because I dragged it all the way down. Of course, if I take it up, it's going to make everything black. If I take it down, it's only going to be visible here. Um, so if I click it and press delete, that deletes the layer as well. And there's an eye next to here. If I click on the eye, it just hides what it is um, that is on the layer that I have clicked on. So in this case, I just want to hide this one. I may as well take it down all the way um, here so that it's not visible. And as you can see, the layers are called layer one, two, three, four, five. Ideally, what you want to do with the layers is you can you, you want to name them so that you have a structure within your file to work on. So if I double click on the layer, I can say that this is my base lines. Um, and then on here, for example, is going to be a layer that is going to be called arrows. Another layer that is going to be called um, I don't know, sun. If I want to make a sun path, for example. Um, but you wanna you wanna give it a meaningful name. Uh, same with naming your files all together, so that you can when you're looking through the the billions of layers that you will eventually have in these uh, in these files, you can actually see what it is that you're looking for. Um, and that's that's a very very useful thing thing to have. Um, similar to uh, to Illustrator and InDesign, um, because these are all Adobe software, they speak very well to each other. So what I could do is I can take this um, um, kind of color scheme from here and this arrow, for example, I can copy it and I can paste it in. Uh, I can do it as a smart object that's going to bring in kind of a, a vectorized file, or I can do it as pixels and that's going to pixelate it, of course. The difference between um, bitmap and vector kind of uh, files is that the, the former, uh, the more you zoom in, the more it pixelates, it loses its quality, whereas the latter, the quality is really good because um, it's based on a, on a kind of um, function that places uh, pixels, uh, that places kind of things um, into the same location as it was before. So however much you zoom in, um, you, you're not going to lose any information. In this case, I'm adding this as a, as a smart object on here. I'm just going to drag it a bit up there and press enter. Um, so I have on here um, the imported file that uh, is going on. Alternatively, if you want to make it, this is not editable. So this would be just if you wanted to bring it, uh, bring it in as it is. If you want to edit it as a, as a picture, pixeled, pixelated uh, version, you can click on it um, with one of um, the tools and it's gonna ask you if you wanna rasterize it. Um, alternatively, you can right click on it and rasterize layer and that's gonna make it into something that you can select uh, within Photoshop. Um, and then basically move around depending on what it is that you want to do uh, with it. But you will, what you will notice is that the more you zoom in, the more you start to see all of those individual pixels. Whereas when it comes to to Illustrator files, however much you zoom in, it's it's a crisp, very 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 crisp outline. Um, quality, which is why we prefer it essentially for diagrams very much. Um, so yeah. Um, 
I have this here. Um, so things that you're going to work with uh, quite a lot in this case are um, layers and layer uh, styles, which I'm going to cover in a little bit, and then selecting, deselecting, cutting, cropping, things like that, uh, which are on this side here. So um, I'm going to start with uh, just importing a texture into here. For example, I want to bring in some grass for this area. And a, a very good um, website to do that is this one here. It's ketchuptextureclub.com. It's very good for renders. It's very good for, for photoshopping things. It has uh, a list of different things that you can find on here. It has concrete, it has bricks, it has um, essentially um, a bunch of different things that you can you can download uh, and use uh, as a student. That is completely fine. Uh, when it comes to practice, like for us, for example, um, unless we have a license with them, it's um, it's a bit of an issue. So I can't really use anything in practice for renders. But as a student, you can reference the website and say, actually, this is a kind of thing that I downloaded from there. For now, I, I'm just going to um, look on Google just to to demonstrate what it is that I mean. But there are resources like that. If you're rendering, it's useful to find images that are textures um, that are seamless um, so that uh, there are no lines in between when you're rendering. Um, well, there's uh, some really random things that are coming up. Um, seamless textures on here. So you see, it's just re these are textures that repeat across without actually uh, creating um, this kind of thing that um, so it's a hundred percent that it's it's a rendered image. So what I'm looking at is uh, I'm looking for a grass texture. Um, say I want uh, the one here. So I want to in this case I'm just going to save the image as um, I can save this image. Yeah, so I would just save this image here, for example, and, you know, uh, bring it into Photoshop, just drag and drop in if that is easy. And it comes in like that. I can just press enter. And I have some grass in here. Um, that I can scale. And roughly bring into my my drawing on there. So this is at the top of everything at the moment. What you're going to probably do is bring it under your uh, main line drawing which uh, would be very helpful um, <clears throat> for it to show through. In this case, though, you can't really see anything under it. Um, and that is because of the layer uh, style that you have. Um, and that is this setting up here. Um, the one that you have on there is normal, which means that this is um, an opaque uh, layer, so you can't see anything under it. Uh, so there are different options that you can use. You can use Dissolve and it doesn't really uh, change very much other than the fact that it has a few dots that you can see up here a little bit weird. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not something that I tend to use a lot. What I do tend to use a lot is the multiply function, uh, which basically uh, kind of takes away everything that is uh, white um, and overlays things uh, on top of, of different textures. So I'm going to select that uh, in a little bit, but you can see you can play around with the different styles um, to see which one it is that you want to you wanna work with. Uh, in each case, uh, there's a lot of different options for, uh, for different things. Um, but yeah, in this case, I'm going to go with multiply and I'm going to change the opacity of this to 90. And also I'm going to change the opacity of the image to uh, 10 because maybe a little bit more because I want it to be a really, really faded uh, green. So once I have that, I can now see 
the, the the space that I have on here on my plan. Um, I can see a little bit of the, the the green behind it. I could leave it like that and start overlaying further textures on. But say if I wanted to to crop the <laughs> the image so that it only fits around the sides, what you're gonna do is click on this polygonal tool. Uh, click on the edges of your site on there and here and close this. You can see there's a small dot at the end of the at the end of your uh, your tool once you come close to to closing the loop essentially. And that creates a, a selection of the space. So what I can now do is I can create a mask over this green space um, over this green unit that I have added here by clicking on this uh, this icon at the bottom. And what that's going to do is it's going to confine it into this area that I have selected. And you can see on here uh, the clipping mask that I have added is um, basically uh, white in the areas that are allowed to show through and black in the areas that don't. So if I click on a brush tool, and click on here. If I um, show you a little bit on there, what happens if I start clicking, if I start painting on here in, in white? So you see you have um, the, the image that is kind of below show through uh, in this case. So, and same if I were to paint in black on here, it would show as white because it's kind of, it's kind of like a mask. Uh, it fil filters what it is uh, that it has under it. So that is that is one way to do it. Um, if you wanted to kind of fray the end a little bit, like this image that I was showing before, on here you see it has this kind of very interesting texture at the end. Uh, you could again go into your uh, brush tool, uh, you can right click and select um, maybe a different kind of brush. So in this case, I have a very round brush that is quite large. Uh, what I could do is I could use one of those ones that are softer um, and click out. And basically what that does is if I were to paint in white on here, um, it creates this kind of softer edge to to your um, to your texture that you have applied on there. Um, yeah, so you see here I haven't placed the texture very well. So if I were to click on there and try to move it, so the first the first tool is the move tool. Uh, it kind of moves everything, which really doesn't help. But um, and if you were to have edited the, the image in itself as a whole without actually applying a mask, that is all you would have. You wouldn't really be able to, to edit its placement very well, but because you have a mask over it, um, the, the image that you have imported is still there uh, in its entirety. So you could take the mask off and delete it, um, and you still have the image that you had before, whereas if I were to to copy this across um, and hide this one, if I had, for example, clicked on the eraser tool and I had erased this part completely, there wouldn't be a way for me to then do what I had shown you before. So that is why we tend to to use masks uh, and keep the images that we bring in um, complete because then. They're, they're much easier to to work with. Um, so if if I go here and I click on the link that there is between the mask and the image itself, I can click on the image and I can actually move the image down. And I can also press Control T and scale it up without actually um, losing any information or losing the work that I had done on here. So this is this is quite a useful useful thing to be able to do. And if I place this back again, of course, it kind of ends up moving the whole thing, but that's that's completely fine. You have that control uh, control over that. So if I if I went if I wanted now to to add um, a few trees on there, I could go on here 
um, again and look into the um, with no background in a plan. And you have all of these things here that you can actually download um, and use. So if I wanted to, can I try and save this? Yeah, that's that's OK. If I wanted to to bring this in, for example, onto here. I can also add this in on there. And in this case, I can bring it over my baselines that I had before. I can, of course, double click on here and rename the um, the layer as trees, press enter. And what you can see is that it has a white background in this case. So if I right click and rasterize the layers so that I can edit it, I can go to select uh, color range um, and click on the white. So what this does is it, it creates a selection of a specific color that you have picked, which really helps delete background that you may have or things that you have imported in a way that really helps you add them onto the page um, without having to deal with the, with the opacity of this. So I can select larger areas of it or smaller areas of it. That is basically how much of the hue of the color you want in this case. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it here. As you will see, it has selected this area and I'm just going to press delete. And it kind of gets rid of the background. Of course, you have, as you can see here, some white edges. So ideally, I would have gone for a little bit of a higher fuzziness of this. So as you can see here, it's a bit closer to the to the end of it, to the end of the green. So if I press delete on this and click on the selection tool and click outside, you now have a tree imported there that it has no background and that is that is very helpful um, for placement. There's also ones that you can download that is they come with no background, but sometimes you know there are these images here and you think oh you know this is not going to have any background but then you you go into the file and it actually does or you need to pay for it and um, yeah so that's that's a good way if it has a white background uh, or like a single color background that's a very good way to to take it off off of what you're doing um so once again you can play with different um different layer styles just to see what things look like. So if I were to multiply this, for example, um, it kind of changes the the way it looks in on top of uh, of other textures. Um, but in this case, I will just leave it as uh, normal and I'm going to take the opacity of it down a little bit just to, to match um, the rest of the things that we're, we're doing essentially. And then since the rat tree is in plan here, I'm going to scale it. Um, so that is control T and then you can work with this by dragging and dropping. Funnily enough, the latest version of Photoshop, if you just click and drag, it's going to scale it um, in a kind of with locked proportions. So if you press shift, it's going to, it's going to you know, squish it and pull it in different ways, which is the exact opposite of what is happening in Illustrator and in InDesign. I'm not sure why they've done that. I think you can change it, but um, I haven't had time to do that here. So keep that in mind. You may get something that is a result that you don't want in some cases. So um, in the good case, you may need to to look it up um, or see why that issue is um, there. So there's, there's tutorials and there's uh, things online that you can look for troubleshooting. So um, a way to to copy this this layer is to to click on the layer, uh, shift alt and pull up, and that will create a copy of it. Uh, similarly, if you press shift alt and pull it from here, it's gonna create, of course, another copy, um, and it's gonna place it exactly where you have pulled it to. Um, and that that's of course a pretty good way to to duplicate trees and uh, different elements. You can place it where it is that you want them to be placed. Um, 
on there. I want this to be below that tree, so I'm just going to add it there. And, you know, it starts to have a kind of a different, uh, a different uh, feel to it by adding different textures onto, onto your drawing. Um, similarly, if I were to add tiles to the roof, I can, I can follow essentially the same, the same process. Um, in this case, say I want my, my building to be white. Um, I can just trace around um, the building and add um, on here. And basically um, change the, the mask that I have on the grass so that this looks um, looks completely white. So if I press control, if I click on the mask and press control I, it's going to do um, the exact opposite color than it was. So if it was white, it's going to make it black. If it was black, it's going to make it white. And suddenly now have kind of a, a, a textured output. Of course, you can add in the same way colors, you can add different textures, you can add people, you can, you know, populate the site that you have in in ways that you want to to work with it. Um, it's it's up to you to play with uh, with the different tools that you have. You can there is uh, brushes that you can download that you have kind of different feel to to what you you can you can add. There is like things like a rain that you can add uh, with with brushes onto things. Like for example, these ones here give it that kind of um, different edge. Um, if you if you want to add things like leaves or, you know, different textures, there's things that you can play with. Um, other than that, um, I'm not really sure what else that there is that you would be, um, that would be useful. Because in this case, what I do is I would texture um, onto here, the plants, the sections, uh, elevations, anything that I need. And then if I were to add, for example, text, or if I were to add um, kind of uh, a vectorized uh, element onto it, I would bring this into Illustrator, or I would add kind of a diagram onto um, InDesign. So it's kind of working between these three software to pull together what it is that you, you want to pull. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is what is it that you want to show and staying consistent with the, the things that you were talking about before.